I'm Dr. Fakir Abari and this is Drug Information Resources. First, let's take a look at what drug information is. Drug information is essentially any information that pertains to medications or drugs. Drug information may be patient specific, it could be academic, or it could be population based and pharmacists have a huge role in it. The pharmacist can serve as a resource for issues regarding cost-effective medication selection and use, medication policy decisions, medication information resource selection, or practice-related issues. The goal of providing high quality drug information is to enhance the quality of patient care, improve patient outcomes, and ensure the prudent use of resources. There is also the concept of drug informatics, which refers to the electronic management of drug information. You will learn more about drug informatics in week 5. Now, let's take a look at drug information activities. There are drug information activities that every pharmacist can do and then there are drug information activities that are specifically done by pharmacists who have specialized in drug information. Some activities that every pharmacist can provide include providing drug information to patients, caregivers and healthcare professionals, creating current educational resources, educating healthcare professionals such as physicians, nurses and other pharmacists on safe and effective medication use policies and processes, and providing continuing education to healthcare professionals including other pharmacists and physicians. And of course, there are activities that drug information specialists provide such as providing information when there is not enough time for other healthcare professionals to appropriately research the topic or when thorough research is required, establishing and maintaining a drug formulary based on safe, safety and efficacy evidence, pharmacoeconomics, and institution-specific factors, Another activity is participating in drug safety efforts to prevent medication errors and adverse drug events. Drug information specialists also have a crucial role during drug shortages. You know, every now and then drugs may have a shortage, either manufacturing issues or drug recalls, and drug information specialists can determine alternatives during these times. There are many other activities that drug information specialists perform which are listed here. The first learning objective is describe the systematic approach of responding to drug information queries. There are nine steps in the systematic approach for responding to drug information requests. Let's take a look at the first one. The first step is to identify the requester. It is extremely important to know who's requesting the information. Is it the patient? Is it the, care is it the caregiver? Is it another healthcare professional? And the reason this is extremely important is because we need to consider the health literacy and the professional background of the requester. It also helps us obtain complete information to ensure our response is appropriate. The second step is to define the true question and information need. It is very important to ask probing questions in order to make sure we understand what the question is. Oftentimes, when someone asks a question, the question may not give us everything we need in order to find the information. So we can ask probing questions such as, does this question pertain to a specific patient? Usually when a healthcare professional requests information, they probably have a specific patient in mind. If that's true, you can ask more specifically about the patient. And of course, the probing questions will give us information that can optimize our search process. For example, we can decide how quickly we need to find the information and respond to the requester. If there's a patient that's waiting for this, 
we need to respond very quickly. Whereas if the question is for making policies for an institution, an immediate response might not be necessary. Instead, a more thorough response might be more appropriate. See learning objective number two for more questions to ask. Step number three is to obtain complete background information. You can examine the patient's medical record if, for example, you work in a setting where you have access to patient charts. This might be more challenging in the community setting. The fourth step is to categorize the question. You can classify requests as patient-specific or academic. Patient-specific questions require patient-specific characteristics, whereas academic questions are more general and broad and can be applied to multiple patients. For example, you can have questions about immunizations in general, or you can have immunization questions about a specific patient. It is also very helpful to classify requests by type of question. By doing this, you would be more likely to find the most optimal resource to find the information. For example, there are specific resources for compatibility, drug interactions, and pharmacokinetics. So by classifying the requests, you would know exactly where to go to find the requested information. The fifth step is to perform a systematic search. You can use tertiary, secondary, and primary resources, which I will explain in learning objective number three. The sixth step is to analyze the information. Clinical reasoning is crucial in this step to ensure that the information is interpreted and applied appropriately. And your pharmacotherapy courses uh, will teach you clinical reasoning throughout the curriculum. The seventh step is to disseminate the information. Your response can be in oral or written or both format, depending on the requester. You may also send the requester any supporting documentation, such as primary literature. The eighth step is to document everything. We have a saying in pharmacy that if you didn't document it, it didn't happen. You can document the resources you used, how much time you spent, especially, especially if you are to be reimbursed for your time, and the final response itself. Documentation can also serve to protect you should there be a legal issue. And of course, the final step is to follow up. The purpose of follow up is to determine the utility of the information that you provided, whether the information resulted in changes in medication use practices or whether the information resulted in changes in patient outcomes.